Today I'm going to do something a little different in this film. Normally I stick to the styles that I've learned and I show you things from all that decades of training and they're siloed into whatever style, Tai Chi or Xingyi or Bagua or Yichuan or whatever it is. But in this case today we're going to do something a little different. I am showing you two drills that are very special, not only because they are style agnostic, they're just in Frankenstein mode where I've taken a few things off the scrap heap, uh, just pieces of junk and welded them together. But what I've made out of them is absolutely amazing. It's incredibly efficient for developing your internal power in the absolute minimum of space, time, and trouble. Okay, drill number one is uh, based on E-Tran. It has elements, I would say, from E-Tran, which I've showed in other films. So I'm going to put the link to the other films in the description so you can see what this is based on. There's a very goofy, I know it looks goofy, it looks stupid, but who cares, right? We're not supposed to care how we look. There's a goofy E-Tran training drill for punching. So the, he was, the Wang Xiang Zhai was influenced by Western boxing, so he took the jab and the cross and he made them into this oddball fusion of Xing Yi and Yi Chen. And it's a great drill. All by itself, it's a great drill. Okay, so I'm going to review that briefly, but I'll also point you to my other film which shows that. But there are a couple of other elements that I've incorporated into that to make it a much more powerful internal practice. The first one is, in boxing, and actually I've showed this in another video too, that uh, there's a drill, in, just an old school drill in boxing where you throw up a tennis ball and you catch the tennis ball, like boom, 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 okay? So that's one element we're going to do here. And the other is from a Tong Bei Tran. Tong Bei Tran is a white ape art. It's uh, very long and relaxed arm, so we're going to put that into it. We're going to put these three elements into a fusion cuisine here. And we're going to use a ball. Now, uh, you know, don't get hung up on material and implements. They don't matter that much. Remember Musashi beat the greatest guy of his time with a boat or, But uh, I have found this ball is really good because it's just the right size. You want something that sort of smacks nicely into your, into your catcher's mid of your palm. And uh, it has some weight to it. It doesn't bounce too far if you miss. And, and you know, anytime you, you can miss the ball and drop it, and it's not going to roll down the hill, and you have to go chase it, it look like a dork. So this thing doesn't bounce too much, it's just the right weight. So I'll put the link in the description for this brand if you want to get this. Otherwise, you can use a tennis ball, you can use an ordinary baseball. So, e Tran, he took the jab, the ordinary boxing jab, and made it into this uh, ball thing. So you're really stretching. You're supposedly guarding yourself <laughs> with this arm, which is ridiculous, right? Because that's going to take, somebody's going to take you out there. But this is how it's done, okay? So don't worry about it. So we're going to always guard ourselves high with this elbow up and out. And then we're going to do our jab with the flat fist, okay? Not the standing fist in this case. So here we are. This is the upper body part of it. Boom, okay? Then to go into the cross, we simply turn our waist. We keep this high guard again. This is each end. And then here, our weight comes forward, and we do our cross again with the flat fist. So it would look like this. Here's our fake jab. Here's our goofy cross. Fake jab, crazy cross. So you could just do this in place. Now you notice, I'm, I'm talking about the upper body now, but there's also a lower body element to this. Now what is that? You've got to get the footwork right, okay? When you do the jab, you come up. Your whole body's like vertically. Up, it's a high kind of a thing. It looks, I don't know, maybe like a bullfighter or something. I don't know. Anyway, you raise your heel, okay? Raise your front heel as you do this so that your weight is essentially 50 50 when you're doing this. Basically, maybe a little more in the back because after all, you're not you've got your whole foot engaged. But you should feel like you're 50 50 in the jab. And then for the cross, you're more like 60 40. So your rear heel comes up in the cross and you put the weight into the front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this, but we're gonna walk as we do it, okay? So jab, cross, and then when you walk, boom, there's your jab, uh, sorry, there's your cross here on the other side, and here's your jab, okay? That's how you do it when you don't have the ball. And now we're gonna add the next component, which is catching the ball, which makes it uh, this great internal drill.
Okay. I have to give you a few fine points of this to really drill them in and hammer them for you so that you don't neglect them and turn this into a mere physical drill. To make this work, we've gone over the e-trend part of it, which is the weird jab and the weird cross, but that's not all there is to it. The other part there is to it is coming from Tong Bei Chen, okay? So what is Tong Bei Chen? It's this white ape thing. Imagine your arms are heavy and long, okay? And that's where, you might not have noticed it, but look at when you drop the ball, let's say I catch it, okay? Now, I have to drop it and throw it for the next punch. So when you do that, don't cramp yourself. Don't think it's like, oh, you know, something like that. Really come down and bring it up, really come down. See how long and relaxed, my shoulders completely relaxed and I bring it up for the next hit. Completely relaxed, bring it up for the next hit. Relax it, bam, there we go, okay. So that's one element, that's the tone bay element of this. Do not neglect that. The second thing is, as you bring it down, you're long, but when you bring it up, bring it close. You see what I mean by close? See how close I'm bringing it to my fist so I can smack right into it? You don't want to be way out there, that's too far. You don't want to be leaning that much, okay? You can lean into the punch as it completes, but bring it close, okay? See how close? Boom. See how close? Boom, okay? So that is the tone bay aspect of it, and uh, you want to get that nice little smack every time, okay? Now, the other thing is the waist. Feel the energy. Eventually, when you do this at first, it's going to be physical. I understand that. But later on, as you do that, as you turn this waist, because you turn your lead into the jab and you turn across in the, uh, in the cross. So you want to feel the energy of the waist and especially the back as you're going. So don't go too fast. Don't rush it. Obviously, this isn't a martial art. This isn't a street killer technique. So you don't have to worry about looking good in that way. Okay, now there are two main drills for today, uh, for this clip, but there is a third thing you have to know, and it's absolutely essential. It's so simple, it's easy to overlook it, but don't overlook it. After you do either of the two drills that are covered in this film, put down your props, your ball, two balls, whatever it is, put all that down, and just stand with uh, your feet shoulder width, just like you're waiting for a bus, okay? And then, simply turn into the tiger mouth hands of Xing Yi Chen, okay? This is very important. After you do the drill, you need to stand like this. Now, some people go, go hog wild with this. They start to get into a stance like this, and their elbows flare up, and they're making a big deal out of it. That is not what you want, okay? What you want is to feel as though you are waiting for a bus, you're absolutely upright, completely relaxed, relax your shoulders, and now, don't do any more than, this is the tiger mouth, this is on my book, I'm not gonna cover all this today in exhaustive detail, but just turn it so you feel you're holding a dinner plate. That's all, that's all. You don't need to do this and this and nothing, okay? Just boom, turn so that your tiger mouths are facing and you feel you're holding a dinner plate. That's all you have to do, okay? And then stand like this for a minute or two. So you would do several lines, what I call lines, is like cocaine, right? So you do several lines back and forth of this drill with the, the tennis ball or the baseball. Then just put it down gently, don't rush, and stand like you're waiting for a bus, relax your shoulders for a minute, turn the tiger mouths to face one another so you're holding a dinner plate, and just feel that energy. It's really amazing. After a few weeks of this even, even a few days of this, you'll notice a huge difference. Okay, now here we have drill number two, and this drill is again a hybrid, it's Frankenstein mode. It's based, just like the other one, is based on a very simple elementary drill from each end. This one is based on something even more primitive, which is probably the first thing back in the day, in the 70s, I trained Taekwondo for a long time, it's very kick-oriented art. The very first warm-up you learn on your first day as a white belt, or even a pre-white belt, you haven't bought your uniform yet, is this drill. So it's really babyish. But if you do it right, if, if you treat it as an internal exercise and don't get hung up on how it looks or, or what level it's at, this can be an incredible, uh, just an amazing intergalactic internal shot for you, okay? So 
The first element of it is lower body. It's a basic, basic kicking warm-up drill from Taekwondo in the 70s. But then, I'll show you that, okay? Then we're going to add another element that takes it to the next level. It's like when they paint a dragon in Chinese traditional art, at the last minute they paint in the eye and like the whole painting just blasts out differently. Okay, so this is just a straddle warm-up, and that's all it is. It's unbelievably simple. What you're going to do is stand in front of your obstacle. You need an obstacle. Don't make it too high. Again, we're, we're not making a, uh, you know, a kung fu hidden dragon movie here. Okay, so a folding chair is perfect. If you're very flexible, you can make it a little higher. But don't make a big deal out of that part. Uh, the main thing is to clear the obstacle whatever your obstacle is. It could be a bar stool, it could be anything. Now, the key thing is to take it as a straddle. So it's as though you're getting on or off a motorcycle or a horse. Here's the big mistake people make. You see that? That is a crescent kick. That's not what we're going for here. What we're going for here is a straddle, all right? So open up just a little bit. It does, I know it looks goofy, it doesn't matter, but the main thing is don't turn it into a crescent kick. All right. Now, the origin of this is, you might know that I presented Shiko as a drill. That is the uh, sumo leg lifting drill. And you notice that this has a lot in common with that. Because Shiko, you could think of as a two-dimensional version of this. Or you could think of this as a three-dimensional Shiko. Because obviously the Shiko is you're staying in this plane. You're staying in this flat plane. Whereas here we've got this rotational aspect and this three-dimensional aspect, okay? But don't go too fast. Take it slow. And you can even stop if you're tired in the middle and then just do another one. I would set a timer for this one. So set a timer for three minutes or five minutes. And then just on the horse, off the horse. On the horse, off the horse. And you notice I'm doing both legs in both directions. So let's go through that. Left leg going forward, okay? Right leg going backward. Right leg going forward. Left leg going backward. So that has all the elements you could have. It's got rotation, it's got lift, and it's got a sort of an opening of the lower body. So you have to kind of understand this. It's not that hard, obviously, right? Or it wouldn't be a first day white belt drill. But do it and uh, take it seriously. And then we'll get into phase two of this where we blast it into turbo space, hyperspace of internal charge. Okay, so now you're thinking, why is this guy teaching me a 70s Taekwondo white belt kick warm up drill? Well, it's what you put it together with that makes the difference. And that's what makes this into an energy work. It is not physical work. And so what I want you to do is get two soft balls, okay? Just ordinary regulation soft balls will be fine. And what you're going to do, remember the tiger mouth. We've talked about that a little bit. So you're going to grip the soft ball gently with all your fingers down to the ring finger. So ring finger through tiger mouth and the thumb. They're all going to softly and gently grip it. Don't grip it any more than you need to. Again, this is not a hard style grip just enough to hold it. You can almost hold it with friction, but sort of conform to the ball. Now, what's happening here? <laughs> it looks like a tea time in uh, old in Victorian England, right? So I call this the peg. This is your peg, okay? So this is your pinky engagement gesture. We're going to take it seriously. I'll give it a name for a reason because it'll stick in your mind more if I give it a little acronym or give it a little name. So on each side, your pinky is going to be gently extended. Now, it's not a hard thing. We're not trying to condition our pinky to blast through a pine board, okay? It's just mentally, you need to engage it enough. I mean, when those uh, late Victorian ladies were drinking tea, they weren't like thinking of punching through a pine board, right? But they had their mind there in that pinky enough to keep it engaged. That's all you need to do. The amazing thing about this drill is that 
Let your arms, again, uh, let your arms relax and hang down like heavy arms, okay? Or like this uh, white ape stuff. Okay, so your arms are completely relaxed as you do this drill. And your arm can be on the inside. See how my arm is on the inside as I'm coming around here? That's probably the most relaxed. You can also do a Bruce Lee mode where your arm is on the outside, as long as you don't get too tense, okay? So, but I would say the best way is probably the Chicot way. See how my arm's on the inside? That's the most relaxed. Your arm is just really hanging down, relaxed. Now, you notice I kept that pinky engagement throughout. So you're gonna do the same drill, but you're just gonna be holding these and you're me mentally going to keep this pinky engagement. Why are we doing that? We're doing that because if you do that with this drill, all the other stuff I talked about, with your arms and shoulders relaxed, you will feel the energy. Each time you raise the foot to do the straddle, you'll feel the energy shooting along the outer edge of your arm and your ulna, which is the forearm here, into the pinky, all along this outer edge. Now, I've talked about this in my books a million times. I'm not going to get, get into it in great detail here, but that's what this drill will do for you. On every raise, as you do your beginning of your straddle, you'll feel, whoa, this thing is like shooting down here. And then, read my book, Acts, okay? It's going to cross through your hand. So once, this is Xing Yi energy. It always goes down the outer part. It then crosses the hand into the tiger mouth, which you formed here. So you will feel all that tangibly, not just as some theory or a book, but you should review the book because I, this is what uh, I call Hong Guan in my book, Acts AXE. So feel that, I, I, don't, you know, I just can't beat it to death. You're gonna have to feel it, but every time you raise on either side, so you've got both of them going, keep that peg, and as you raise, boom, you'll feel the energy just coming right down. And then, once you finish, let's say, let, set a timer for this. Do it for maybe three minutes, okay? Five minutes if you're a badass. Then gently put the balls down, don't rush. And again, just like before, shoulder width, feet, waiting for a bus, nothing special. Relax your shoulders. Now just turn your hands so the tiger mouths are facing as though you are holding a dinner plate. And just feel that and just bathe in that energy. And it'll be rushing down your arms later. I know you don't believe me now, but that's okay. You're gonna feel it if you do this. Thank you.